Hey guys, it's Elle. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am decluttering my pantry. This is horrible. There is stuff crammed everywhere and the worst part is all the stuff that has accumulated on the floor. Really don't know how it got this bad, but this is the end of it. Today I am going to be organizing my pantry using mostly Dollar Tree items. First up, let's get everything out of the pantry and onto the countertops. And tip number one is try to categorize your things on your countertops into different categories. All the beans together, all the fruits together, all the pasta together. For tip number two, have a basket or a box where you can stack multiple items from your pantry so that you don't have to go item by item from pantry to countertop. Use a set of headphones to play some really good music so that you can stay on task and get the job done. Tip number four, have an end goal in mind. Is your goal for decluttering your pantry to provide yourself with a better opportunity to know what items you have for cooking? Is your end goal making sure your family is able to maintain a clean pantry? Or are you just looking to revamp your pantry look and have a more Pinterest worthy concept? Once everything is out of your pantry, in comes tip number five, giving your pantry a good clean down. Sweeping the floor and even wiping down the racks are all things that are going to help your decluttering process really come to life. All right, we've got everything removed from the pantry, as you can see here. Y'all, this is way more stuff than I could have ever imagined would come out of this pantry, but here we are. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about are the containers. Now, as you know, I have gotten the majority of these containers from the Dollar Tree, but I did get one or two items from some different locations because I just really love the functionality of the item or it was exactly perfect for the purpose that I had a plan for. Now, everything that I got, I tried to make sure that it was either in white or clear, but there are some items that I just could not find in that color frame for what I needed, especially my rice. So I just rolled with whatever color they had. Also, there'll be a couple of items that I previously had that are like a copper wire basket and some items that have blue lids. I'm going to be keeping those items. I'm not going to get rid of them. So for those items, I'm going to kind of slide them to the back a little bit so they don't throw off the monochromatic thing that we're going for. Now, let's just jump into letting me let you know and showing you some of the containers that I purchased. So the first one here, this is called a fridge soda can storage container, and I got these from the Dollar Tree. Now, some people have said that they could find these in their stores, but I was not one of those people, so I had to order them online. And with ordering online at the Dollar Tree, that means you have to buy in bulk. So I had to get 24 of these containers, and I'm gonna be honest, when I first purchased this, I thought to myself, I'll never need 24 containers. But after looking at all of this, I'm probably gonna need every single one of these. The next containers I got, these are a little bit smaller. They're clear with the little perforated holes and a slight white handle here. I thought this would be great for any like baking goods. This here is like brown sugar or even things like your cake mixes. They just fit perfectly in these containers. So I grabbed a couple of those. This here, Dollar Tree calls a locker box. It is not super sturdy, but I definitely needed something like this. I do have a medicine basket that was currently in my cabinet. I'm going to need to remove that and replace it with something. So this may be the winner of the game, but we'll definitely see as we get things moving forward. I've got a wire mesh basket here. This isn't mesh, it's just plastic, but it has the holes in it. This is a lower profile that comes in a rectangle. My potential thoughts were putting condiments in there. Again, not a super sturdy container, so I'm going to be cautious about how heavy things are. This is not a container that I would necessarily want to have to pull out every time I go into it, so maybe I'll be putting some spares or extras in here so that when I do go into this container, it's not frequent. I've got a couple of canisters here with a syllable scrollable lid. This one here is eight quarts. Nope. This one is eight cups, two quarts. 
and this one comes in 12 cups or three quarts. So my thoughts are I'll put my opened oatmeal in here while I'm using it. Not too sure what I'm gonna be putting in this container, but white containers are hard to find. So I just kind of grabbed some things if I saw them, I figured I'd use them in some of the project, even if it's not for this pantry. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I know you've probably seen some other pantry organizations and people make them like Pinterest worthy and they open up all their pasta and put them in all these containers. This is not the video for that. I have to be honest with myself about how I'm gonna maintain this pantry once I actually organize it. And I am not going to be that person that is going to refill the containers every time I come back from the grocery store or buy another container if I try a new form of pasta. For me, with cooking, I like to try lots of different foods from lots of different cultures. So that literally could mean that I could have five to 10 different types of pasta and I don't want to commit to having containers for each of them. Now this container here is a larger container. Um, it's kind of like a bucket. I'm thinking I'm going to be putting my Kroger bags or grocery bags in here. And I also have some light bulbs that I keep in my pantry. So I was thinking maybe they could go in here as well in a container like this as well. We'll see if the light bulbs end up landing in the pantry or if they're going to go to a hall closet that I have right off of my kitchen. Now one of my bigger containers here is the square container. This is a great sturdy container. I have these all over my house in various colors. So finding them in white, I was so, so excited to be able to grab these because I know they're going to hold up and withstand. I can put taller items in here and I know that if I put them on a top shelf, they'll be able to support themselves if I bring them down. Now this item here is from Walmart. This is a under $6 container. I love this container. It holds up to 21 cups. And the entire purpose I bought this, and I actually bought two of these, was for my rice. So the thing about this is it has a handle, which is great. It feels very sturdy. And this lid here, you have options. So when you take this lid off, you have this inner lid here, which has an opening so that you can pour, but also, if you're not interested in pouring anything, your whole container can be open here. So as of now, haven't used it yet, but I like the concept of having this pour option. So I'm thinking that I will be sticking to using this container with that option. Now, a couple of other things that I purchased for labeling, and this is from the Dollar Tree. These are adhesive label holders. So these are actually made for the edge of binders. They have a little clear shield where you can slide in these little paper pieces. I'm gonna use these for labeling. And I just don't know how long that adhesive is going to last. So I did buy some Velcro or hook and loop fasteners. I went ahead and got the one that's in the hardware section, which is just a long loop. I'm gonna cut them to the size I need. But if you're not into cutting your Velcro, you go to the craft section of the Dollar Tree and they have Velcro dots pre-ready to go. So hopefully I don't regret trying to get a little bit of extra yardage <laughs> and getting this from the hardware section, but I'll definitely let you know. And the last containers I got were these stackable bins. I got these from Burlington for $2.99. I just thought they looked so pretty. Um, I don't have a ton of snacks like some people do who have um, children, um, but for the few snacks I have, I thought this would be a great way for me to just grab a snack and go. So let's stay tuned for the video to see if I actually use them for snacks, but I thought they were great. And that kind of concludes all of the containers that I'll be using. Now here comes the fun part. Let's start stacking all of our items into our various containers. Once you're done with that, go ahead and put them into your pantry. Tip number seven, make sure you check the expiration dates and pitch it if it's bad. For tip number eight, make sure you wash all containers before you put any food into them. Consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. That's tip number nine. Don't forget to have fun with this decluttering and organization process. 
Make sure to move things around as you see fit until you get it just how you like it. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about that I forgot to mention in my containers earlier. And those are these IKEA magazine holders. So they're two for $6.99, and I'm actually gonna use these to store all my saran wrap and foil. So they are two different sizes, so I'm gonna go with my wider items to go in the wider container. And these, of course, will need to go on my very top row to ensure that they can clear the shelves. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the fact that on my oats and my grits and my still cut oats, there are directions on here. So what I'm actually gonna do is cut the directions off and I'm gonna attach them to the back of each of their correlating containers so I can never forget how to cook them and what the directions and instructions are. And here are our final results. Clean, organized, and most importantly, budget-friendly. And those of you who like to know exactly what went into each container, the next part of the video is just for you. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that big reveal. And I just want to go over what I put in each container. And right off the bat, you probably noticed that there are no labels. And I actually decided against the labels because I didn't see them making my life any easier or helping me if I transition things down the road. Also, there were gonna be quite a few containers that were gonna say the same exact thing, and that just didn't seem like it made any sense to me. So if labels work for you and your family, then I say definitely add the labels. But if not, there's no hard and fast rule with this. Ditch the labels, move on with your life, and just keep your pantry organized. So let's start at the very top here. So I've got some like cake decorating and platter things some doilies here in the far, far corner, and I've also got some 10 inch cake circles here. These are the mesh magazine racks from Ikea that I got, they came two in a pack. I've got parchment paper in here, foil, Ziploc baggies, all of those items are here. And there are a couple items that are behind that that wouldn't fit in there, but from the outside, it looks really good. This container is my cereals. I'm not a really, really big cereal eater, so this really worked for me. I've got some granola in here and just a box of Cheerios. Next to this, you'll see these are all my crackers, everything from saltine crackers to Ritz. Any type of crackers that I may eat, they're all in here. And the last container that you guys can see pretty much here, um, these are sweets. So we've got cookies in here, um, candy, any little sweet snacks that I may want, some individual cake mixes. I put all of those in there. And kind of peeking in the corner here, which you can barely see, which is great because I really don't use it that frequently, is my medicine cabinet. So in the before, that was an area that was in a green bucket. I got rid of some of those. Some of them were empty, consolidated some stuff and all the medicine is in that locker cabinet or that locker container from the Dollar Tree. So in our second row here, I have rice and grains that are like specialty rice and grains. So um, some Zatarans here, there's couscous in here, um, some long grain brown rice and some quinoa as well. And I also just threw some fish fry in here. Didn't really have any other place to put it, so it fit neatly, I rolled with it. And in these next three containers, I actually have pasta. So I thought this was a good idea. These containers are pretty good. They come over the edge of this wire rack about an inch or so, but nothing to where I feel like it's gonna tip over. But pasta, as you know, is light, so it's easy to slide them in, slide them out. And I left all my pasta in these containers. If it's an open container, it either has a clip or I put it in a Ziploc baggie. But either way, I made sure that all the noodles fell into this category. Then the far corner here, what I have here is breadcrumbs and croutons. And in the far, far corner, those are actually some decanters for serving teas, lemonades, whatever you want to drink when you're having a party. It has a release spout on there just kind of slid those into the corner so it's nice and neat and everything's super organized and ready to go. So we're gonna go down a little bit lower on a lower shelf and then we'll hit the other side of the L and you guys will see everything that's in the pantry. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the next couple of rows that are lower here on the list. So far corner, I've got pancake mix in here, a couple different versions. The one that I'm using currently, as you can see, I have it in a Ziploc bag and some beignet mix is in the back as well. This is kind of a health snack container. I've got some popcorn kernels there that I can make some popcorn as well as some nuts, sunflower seeds and chopped walnuts. I think I actually was gonna candy these and add them to my salad. So those are there. So speaking of salads, I have some fried onions here as well as some extra salad dressing, which is like the equivalent to mayonnaise. So I have that here and this container has sauces. This actually has mustard in here, more because it fits in the container than I feel like it fits this category. But the rest is Alfredo sauce, tomato sauce for spaghetti and some pesto that I was really interested in trying. This is actually a roasted red pepper pesto. So we'll see how that goes, that sounds good. And then here I've got some salad dressings and some specialty vinegars here. Red wine vinegar and seasoned rice vinegar. And then in these corners here, further out, I've got barbecue sauce, wing sauce, and these are salad dressings as well. However, these just happen to be in a glass bottle. So as we go on to this rack here, what you can see here are my meals and flour. So in the very back, I've got basic flour, and then I also have bread flour that I use with my bread maker. I've got some whole wheat flour here and cornmeal. This here is just a row of plastic silverware, so things for hosting parties. You see that here as well with the plastic napkins, and there's a couple of solo cups in the way back. Down below here, I've got some Gatorade here, and that is in one of those um, refrigerator canned soda Dollar Tree containers. And these containers, I believe my mom got them from Walmart for me pre pantry organization but we've got potatoes here and then I've got onions in the very bottom and my bottled water here as well. Now on this rack here what I have is sugar and in the one behind it is raw cane sugar. Those look very different so there's no discrepancies here and I've kind of kept some baked goods up here on the top. So in this far one, I have brown sugars, powdered sugar, and then I just threw this little funnel cake maker in here that I actually haven't used. I threw that in there, it has a mix in it as well. This here is rice that is still sealed and not open. And then I've got all my dry beans here. Any type of dry beans you can think of, I put them in here. And you will notice throughout this video that I have lots of beans and that's because I have taken on a new diet in the past year and it is a pescatarian diet. So outside of seafood, I don't really eat much other meats. So I focus on a lot of beans for protein as well as adding tofu to my diet. And I do a lot of research on other items that are high in protein to make sure that I'm not having a protein deficiency as I'm starting this new diet. On the very bottom, we've got some supplies here as well as some things that I don't use as frequently. So very, very bottom are my vinegars, apple cider vinegar and a white wine vinegar. Just got some garbage bags there and then some paper tablecloths. You can probably barely see it, but there's another one of my Dollar Tree containers there and that has baking items in it. So the um, little paper cupcake holders are in there some sticks for making cake pops, little things that you would use for baking are in that container. Straws, paper towels. Right next to that are some various oils, canola oil, grapeseed oil. And on the far, far bottom of this black rack here, I actually have some soap. So in the corner, I was really trying to keep as many things off the floor as possible. That's literally bottled water, which I typically don't buy. But because of the pandemic, I did purchase that very early on. So I have those, a large container of Gatorade, club soda, and then we have some more cups for parties or hosting parties. And lastly, in this really big container, as I said earlier, I did decide to go with that. I put my croaker bags there so that I can use those for trash or whatever purposes. And I did slide some reusable bags in the far corner as you see sticking out there. So that's kind of everything on this one side. Let's take a look at what we have on the opposite side of the pantry. Now for the opposite side of the pantry, 
Here in the far corner, I actually have some items that I use for more arts and craft projects, which are gingerbread houses, and I will use those in the upcoming season, but I'm just going to leave them here in my pantry. Up above that, I've got some tostados. I want to make sure that those don't crunch and break up, so that seemed like a safe, secure place to put them. These here are the Walmart containers I showed you guys earlier and I have brown and white rice in here and make sure if your pantry does get warm, which mine happens to get warm, to keep your pantries cracked, the door cracked, so that it doesn't get as hot because rice is supposed to be stored in a cool dry place. So I've got dry under control with these containers, but we need to keep it cool. So during the summer months, I'll definitely be keeping my door cracked. Next to it here, I have some oats. And these oats are oatmeal. I've got rice here that's great for risotto, grits on the bottom, and stone cut oats there. And I actually have included the directions for each of the items that is in a clear container like this so that I can remember exactly what type of oats they are and more importantly, how to cook them. We've got some sparkling water here that is flavored and these are chips. And you probably noticed that many of my items weren't open except for some of my pastas. And that is because I keep open snacks actually on my countertop so I can get to them easily. So that is one thing that may be different from my pantry than yours. I don't keep a lot of open items inside of the pantry. So on this next shelf, if you got a sweet tooth, this is where you're gonna go. This is cake mix and brownie mix. Next to this, I have a container for milks. So I've got coconut milk here, an almond milk that does not need to be refrigerated until it's actually open. We've got some pre-whipped frosting here. And this here is probably my favorite part of the pantry. And these are where I have some granola bars and snacks here, and it just looks so pretty. It's probably not as functional as some of the other baskets, but it has a good look to it. Next to that, I have pancake syrup and a bottle of honey behind it. And here is a very large container of peanut butter. Now, most of the times I do keep my peanut butter in the refrigerator because I eat almond butter. However, I bought this to make cookies and it is not open, so pantry is perfectly fine. We've got some candy canes in the back that will also be used when I make the gingerbread homes. In the far corner, if you love a good Taco Tuesday, I've got the queso and the salsa right here and ready to go. Now for my can rack. I think this is what really motivated me to start thinking about reorganizing my pantry was coming across these containers at the Dollar Tree. So again, these are the soda can fridge containers from the Dollar Tree. I really think that this was a great buy. Of the 24, I actually used 20 of them. I'd given four to my mom, but the reality is I didn't have a space for not another one in the pantry, so that was completely fine. Over here, I have canned salmon. Next to that, this container has tuna as well as one can of crab meat. Here, I've got some soups. And these are containers that were too large to fit into the rolling soda can container. So we've got the Campbell's tomato and some baked beans in the back as well. And speaking of baked beans, that kind of moves us on to our beans. So here I have my darker beans. I've got black beans and kidney beans here. Um, I've got some lighter beans here with my pork and beans and some pinto beans. The next containers have great northern beans as well as black eyed peas and garbanzo beans. Here I've got some jackfruit, which I actually have not tried jackfruit, making it myself. So I'm really excited for some recipes that I'm going to be trying with that. And in the next container, we've got veggies, corn, beets, tomatoes, and in the far corner, we've got some canned fruit. And I've got peaches and I have a can of crushed pineapples for baking. So that's kind of everything that's included here in the pantry. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this transformation of my pantry. It did take some time, but I know from this point forward, I'll be able to keep it organized and my recipes are going to be on point because I'm going to know exactly what I have available in my pantry and I'll be able to try some new ingredients as well. So I'm excited for the future of what's to come with my cooking and to see how I keep everything tidy and organized from this point forward. I hope you guys enjoyed it and that you're inspired to tackle your own pantry 
at your homes as well. But as always, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget if you haven't already to subscribe to my channel, check out all of the rest of the videos that I have on my channel. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys soon.